Rory McIlroy, <clears throat> uh, what do you think of him? Look, I love his attitude. You know, I love that he says something and realizes he makes a mistake, made a mistake in saying it or the wrong inflection, and he'll come out and apologize. You know, he's a human being, and I love it. I love that where, you know, instead of having your guard up all the time and just not answering the question the right way, and just say the way it is. You know, he's he shows it with his play. He's no, he has no fear. He's going to step up the plate. He makes mistakes. He can call top of three wood. He can take a seven. He can, but you know, at the end of the day, he walks off with that beautiful Irish smile and does the interview and doesn't blame anybody except he may have just had a bad day, you know, and I love that attitude he has. What was it like for you to watch Adam Scott, your fellow Australian, win the Masters to become the first Australian ever to do so and then to thank you uh, the, the day he won it? Well, I think that was the second time I ever actually had a tear in my eye because of the game of golf. I was so happy really? for him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was so happy for him because, you know, I know what it's like to carry that banner of responsibility for your nation. Um, Charlie Earp, um, my greatest mentor, really, said to me, Greg, when you go out and play, you represent two things. You represent the game of golf and your country. So when you go play, and everybody was saying, how come an Australian has never won the Masters in all these decades since the tournament's been in inception? And you go, wow, well, how come that is not to be? And I came close enough times, right? And everybody says, well, how come the Australians can't win it, right? And then when an, an Australian does win it, you go, yes, you know, we've checked that box. So, you know, and then it happens to a great mate of mine who, um, you know, fortunately for me, came up through my foundation. And all of a sudden you go, well, that's even more of a cooler story. What do you think of the state of the game today? I've never seen the game of golf so healthy on a global front as where it is today. Um, I love it that there are a lot of great players have a chance to win any golf tournament. Uh, major championships or PJ Tour events, or any way you play, you seem, there seems to be like it was in the 80s when I had the Ballesteros, myself, the Faldos, the Prices of the world, the Couples of the world, Jose Maria Lathabel, Ian Woosnam, Sandy Lyle. Every week, no matter where we were, we knew we were up against three or four other guys that could just take you to lunch and just spit you out, right? So you always had to be on your game. You always had to focus. You always had to be ready for it because I love that, going there. Now the game of golf is about where it was in the 80s. So no matter where you are in the United States, you're going to go up against the Roy McIlroy's, the Henrik Stenson's, and, and the, the Tiger Woods's of the world, and the uh, Jordan Spieth's of the world. And you, know, you can go down the list, the Patrick Reed. You know, all of a sudden, this, this base is spreading out. And that's why I think golf is so healthy. And it's going to be great for television. It's going to be great for corporate and it's going to be great for growing the game of golf.